Thursday, April 25th, 2019, regular meeting. And at this time, uh, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Friolda Estrada? Present. Friolda Garretson? Here. Friolda Granados? Present. Friolda Hudak? Present. <laughs> Friolda Palmieri Mooded? Here. Friolda Staten? Here. Friolda Williams? Here. Vice Chair Mir Mirabella? Present. And Chair Kowalski? Here. Chair, you have nine freeholders present? Thank you. Would you please lead us in the prayer and salute to the flag? Humbly we ask God, the giver of peace and the lover of charity, to give the entire family of nations true agreement with his will, and to grant the light of his spirit on all who work for justice and peace. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, sorry. Mr. Clerk, would you please read the Statement of Compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act? Thank you. The Chair wishes to announce that pursuant to the requirements of New Jersey statutes annotated, Title 10, Chapter 4, Section 10 of the Open Public Meetings Act. Adequate notice of this meeting of the Board of Chosen Freeholders, the County of Union has been given by mailing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2018 along with periodic <coughs> changes necessitated by circumstances to the newspapers circulating within the County of Union who are designated to receive such notice. And by posting the annual meeting schedule for the year 2018 in the administration building and further by filing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2018 with the Office of the County Clerk. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve communications? So moved, Madam Chair. Thank you. And a second? Second. Seconded by Frilder Staten. Uh, moved by Vice Chairman Mirabella. A clerk of the board, please call the roll. Frilder Estrada? Yes. Frilder Garretson? Yes. Frilder Granados? Aye. Frilder Hudak? Aye. Frilder Palmieri Mooded? Aye. Frilder Staten? Yes. Frilder Williams? Aye. Vice Chairman Mirabella? Aye. And Chair Kowalski? Yes. Chair, you have nine votes in the affirmative. Thank you. Uh, now we have minutes for approval. May I have a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Freeholder Garrison. Second, please. Second. Thank you. Freeholder Palmieri Mooded. Uh, Clerk of the Board, please call the roll. Freeholder Estrada? Uh, yes, with an uh, abstention on December the 13th of the agenda, <coughs> regular. Frilda Garrison? Yes. Frilda Granados? Aye. Tall. Frilda Hudak? Um, I will abstain from the minutes of November 28th agenda and regular and the December 13th agenda and regular meetings. Aye to the rest. Frilda Williams? Aye. Vice Chairman Mirabella? Aye to all. Chair Kowalski? Yes. Chair, you have seven votes in the affirmative for the minutes of the November 8th agenda and regular meeting minutes. <coughs> Six votes in the affirmative for the November 29th agenda and regular meeting minutes. Five votes in the affirmative for the December 13th agenda and regular meeting minutes. And seven votes in the affirmative for the December 20th agenda and regular meeting minutes. Thank you. Tonight we have an ordinance for adoption. Uh, Mr. Clerk, would you please read the ordinance by title? Ordinance number 806-2019. An ordinance to amend the laws of Union County Administrative Code and Policies and General Legislation by amending Part 1, Chapter 49, Fees, and Chapter 132, <coughs> Towing. And the meeting is open for the purpose of commenting on Ordinance Number 806-2019 only. If you have a comment, kindly state your name and town of residence and adhere to the five-minute time limit. <laughs> Good evening, Chair Kowalski, ladies and gentlemen of the Freeholder Board and Young Hudak attending. Uh, Bruce Patterson Garwood. Uh, just, just my normal question, uh, the overview of uh, what this is about for the public to understand. Thank you. County Council. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, with reference to the fees, it is a uh, provision specifically provides for the uh, 
Fiscal is a fair committee to recommend to the board certain waiver of fees at certain times. And specifically excluded from those waivers, though, are police officers, paramedic fees, fees established by the Office of Health Management, including inspections and permits. As to the towing, there were some changes relative to the definitional section, and then there were actual uh, changes in the towing fees. Um, and the, the list is uh, part and parcel of the ordinance and uh, is incorporated therein, the majority of which are, looks like a number of them are reductions. The substance of the ordinance itself has really uh, not changed, just the fees. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and we have another ordinance for adoption, uh, number 806-2019. Oh, sorry. Let's, let's, let's vote on 806-2018. Yes. No, 2019, 806 to 2019. Uh, wait, uh, I would ask that policy chairwoman Rebecca Williams move the ordinance and for final reading and adoption. Chair, I would like to move ordinance number 806-2019 for final reading and authorize the clerk of the board to advertise same in accordance with the law. And we have a second? Second. Seconded by Vice Chairman Mirabella. Clerk of the Board, please call the roll. Fielder Estrada? Yes. Fielder Garrison? Yes. Fielder Granados? Aye. Fielder Huda? Aye. Fielder Palmieri Mude? Aye. Fielder Staten? Yes. Fielder Williams? Aye. Vice Chairman Mirabella? Aye. And Chair Kowalski? Yes. Chair, you have nine votes in the affirmative. Thank you. We'll move on to the 2019 budget title resolution. Uh, this meeting is open to the public for the purpose of commenting on resolutions, resolution number 2019-313 only. This resolution allows governments to adopt the budget by title rather than reading each line item of the budget. And it declares that the public hearing conditions, as per the state, have been satisfied. So if you have a comment, would you kindly state your name and town of residence and observe the five minute time limit. Good evening, Chair Kowalski, ladies and gentlemen, free hold the board, Bruce of Patterson of Garwood. Uh, Moving forward, I, I think actually the title of the county budget should not be called county budget, but maybe uh, county fictional budget, because from what, every time I look at it, there's no sound basis of, of fiscal integrity within that budget. So please change it to county. <laughs> You're looking at me. But anyway, but uh, fictional. <laughs> Just add the word fictional in there. That would make more sense. Thank you. Thank you for expressing your opinion. Uh, are any other comments? <coughs> Seeing no one else, I'll formally close this portion of the meeting. May I have a motion to adopt resolution 2009? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Wait. Yes, Freeholder uh, Vice Chair Mirabella. Um, would you please move a, a resolution number 2019-313? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll move um, ordinance number 2000, resolution 2019-3-3 uh, and... 3-1-3. Uh, 3-1-3, uh, yes, thank you, Freelder. So I'll, I move it. And the second. second, seconded by Freelder Hudak. Clerk of the Board, please call the roll. Freelder Estrada. Yes, affirmative. Fielder Garrison? Yes. Fielder Granados? Aye. Fielder Hudak? Aye. Fielder Palmieri Mooded? Aye. Fielder Staten? Yes. Fielder Williams? Aye. Vice Chair Mirabella? Aye. And Chair Kowalski? Yes. Chair, you have nine votes in the affirmative. Thank you. And we will now move to the county budget resolution. 
Uh, prior to opening the, this portion for the public hearing on the 2019 budget, I'd like to ask Fiscal Chairman, Vice Chairman Mirabella to say a few words. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate that. Um, following the Fiscal Committee's review over the past few months and the introduction of the 2019 budget on March 28th, we are now set to have the official public hearing before voting to adopt the final budget tonight. Since the county manager presented his executive budget, the Freeholders Fiscal Committee and all department heads worked together to reduce the tax levy by an additional $900,000. This was done without any loss of jobs or impact to any services. The overall result is a tax increase of just 1.75%. This is an average tax increase of $17, the lowest in nearly 20 years. The final budget is below cap and also complies with both the 1977 cap and the 2010 cap. I'd like to take a minute to thank the members of the Fiscal Affairs Committee, Freeholder Sergio Granados, Freeholder Paul Mary Mudad, <coughs> and Freeholder Angel Estrada for their work um, with the County Manager, uh, Ed Oatman and the Department Heads, and uh, particularly our Finance Director, B.B. Taylor and her staff. And I might add that this was a real team effort of all the freeholders. The fiscal committee, obviously, but all the freeholders um, worked hard, gave their input. It was taken into consideration, and we were in a good uh, position um, to uh, pass this budget tonight. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Uh, Mr. Clerk, would you please read the budget resolution for the record? Budget resolution 2019-314. Resolution adopting the 2019 County of Union budget. Okay, and now we'll open the public hearing. If anyone who has comment, please state your name and town of residence and observe the time on it. Good evening, members of the Board of Chosen Freeholders. Jim Bennett, 38 Fairview Avenue Summit. In the past, I've been a fervent critic of this board for lack of fiscal responsibility. So, when this board brings in a budget under cap, it is incumbent on me to acknowledge that fact, too. My top line message to you tonight is congratulations, keep it going. Your work is not done. Your next focus should be to combine the Sheriff's Department with the Union County Police, as has every other county in New Jersey, saving potentially 75 badges, and the savings could result in the millions. Another focus needs to be juvenile detention. The decision to merge juvenile detention with Essex County is commendable. Now the question becomes, what to do with the facility that is no longer being used and is up for sale? There's precedent in the sale of Runnels Hospital. The sale of the hospital was prudent because there is no reason for government to be involved in running a hospital. Government needs to concentrate on its core functions. My disappointment lies in how the proceeds of the Runnels sale were applied. The proper application of these sales proceeds would have been to amortize the county debt. County debt exceeds $600 million, and you missed an opportunity here to reduce it. Instead, you distributed the windfall to municipalities for infrastructure product, projects and other spending. Every homeowner knows that when an asset is purchased or improved using debt, the concomitant transaction when the asset is sold is to amortize that debt. I said the last time I appeared before you that the ability to borrow and carry debt does not compel its use. When you find a buyer for the juvenile detention facility, learn your lesson from Runnels and apply the proceeds to amortize the debt. Finally, the Open Space Trust Fund has served its stated purpose and needs to be either dissolved or used for open space. If dissolved, proceeds from this fund should also go to amortize the debt. Currently, these funds are going to recurring salaries for inner city sports. That application is ultra-virus and wrong. 
If inner city sports are important, <coughs> fund them properly. Don't raid a public trust fund when the stated purpose of a public trust fund has been met, fiscal prudence calls for its dissolution. To conclude, you have shown that you can stay within the 2% gap. Keep it up. Thank you. Comment. Anyone else? Me. Oh, oh. Yeah, Hold one comments. comment please. Just in reference to Mr. Bennett's comment. Open space, I serve on the open space committee also. Open space dollars go to benefiting all communities across the county of Union, not just <coughs> inner cities or any municipalities, okay? Just so want to be perfectly clear on that. It services both suburban, urban, et cetera, okay? okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Any other comments from the public? Please come forward. Mm -hmm. Good evening, my name is Tom Miller. I'm from Westfield, New Jersey. And in reviewing the budget, I'm glad to see the great fiscal results that have been produced by a lot of hard work. And I've looked carefully at the Westfield process, and I know how much heavy lifting is involved. And great thanks to everybody on the work they've done on behalf. Interestingly, I have to echo some of the comments that we just heard from our friend from Summit in that the level of debt that this county is carrying may be giving a false sense of security by its credit rating. And it's important to understand that the credit rating doesn't mean that's good debt. It means that there are a lot of people there that can pay the debt should there be a risk of default. If you look later at the budget, which is not here for us to look at, unfortunately, but I know it's been published on the web, take a look at the level of debt service that is paid each year relative to the total amount of debt, or more importantly, the amount that is collected in the tax levy. And then think to yourself, how many pennies on the dollar are being collected to service that debt? A good budget production this year means times are good. And when times are good, you take the most responsible fiscal maneuvers you can afford. Think about what directions you give to the county management to forcefully push down the debt as much as possible. Because when we're back here in three years, there are going to be one of two cases. Either the economy has done very well and interest rates are up, which means your replacement cost of debt goes up, or interest rates have gone down because the economy has gone down. And those of you who were in this process in 2008, 2009, know how scary it suddenly gets to manage a municipal or government budget. So please, as you go forward after these successes, each and every one of you, on behalf of all the members of this county, please do everything you can to push down the level of county debt. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, John Burry of uh, Kenilworth. And I wanted to follow up on that open space trust fund mention. Uh, it, it is being rated, and it's being, being been rated since 2010, 2011, big time. Uh, when the Christie 2% cap came in, uh, finance manager was Lawrence Caroselli and he wanted to retire and he wanted to get lifetime health benefits and he had to stay within the cap so what he did was take money from the open space trust fund uh, two million of that is being paying parks employees it's in the budget there's a line item from open space to parks employees theoretically to take care of open space trust fund purchases but that's just silly I mean it's been the same number every year and it's far far more I mean the that's the, the fund should be, it's only paying about a million dollars with these oversized checks you give out to these people. That's about it. The rest of it is going into the county budget because that's what Lawrence Caruselli needed in 2011 to get his lifetime health benefits. Uh, there's another item there, 4.2 million for, or 4.5 million for debt. And I've tried to get it, but it's a made up number. Uh, everything purchased is accounted for. It's all been paid for. That number is, 
phony. And if the division of community, if anybody in Trenton actually looked at these numbers, there would probably be a lot of people in trouble. So if anything, uh, I think you should be honest and just get rid of the open space trust fund because you're using it for your budget, just like you're using a lot of the debt for your budget also. I mean, every April there's this $43 million that gets debt. So it's kind of funny to see these guys ask to have the debt cut. I mean, you've already got it in your system. It, every year there's going to be more and more debt, and it's going to get worse and worse. So <coughs> I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Any other comments? Good evening, Chair Kowalski, Bruce, and ladies and gentlemen of the field of the board, Bruce Patterson, Garwood, um, here to speak on the budget. Uh, I guess the first comment is, from what I understand, I, I, this, budge, this budget hearing is probably illegal. It's being held within 27 days of, of uh, introduction, and according to LFN 2018-28, it said it's supposed to be 28 days, so you're a day short. So we'll jump past that. Uh, you, ha you have a, a chart that I had uh, hopefully Jim distribute to you, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a little while. Uh, hopefully, I, you, you did hear me the last couple of meetings when I was talking about budget issues. Um, so maybe you have some answers when I talk about it again. And I just want to thank all the freeholders, yes, for, for getting involved and asking questions. So that, I like that. That was good, and I, I did mention that also previously. Uh, I did a spreadsheet, you don't have it, but I, I mean I did a spreadsheet from uh, 2015 budget to 2019 budget, that's a five year span, and that was when, uh, that was over the span of when you got rid of Runnels and also you closed the juvenile detention center. And uh, I, I compared the numbers of, of all the appropriations that were in both budgets, and it, it was surprisingly, uh, it was actually a decrease from uh, this year's budget. I mean, this year's budget is actually a decrease of $25 million from the 2015 budget. Yet the, the $25 million is the appropriations, yet the budget actually is staying the same, $492 million versus $490 million. And oddly enough, taxes actually went up $32 million in that span of time. That tells me that the, these numbers and like I said, I called it fictitious before. These numbers tell me something is not right with this budget, and I mentioned this on other budgets also, and it's out of balance. Um, and I don't think it's a, we didn't lose any grant revenue, so I mean, you know, something's just strange about this budget. Uh, some interesting I items I found in, in comparing the fi five years ago to now, uh, the Runnels and state institutional uh, ex uh, appropriations that went actually that total about seventy million dollars and now that's gone uh, replaced just by an offset of twelve million dollars on cornerstone so so there's like fifty five million dollars that that was a savings that's now somewhere buried in your budget uh, salaries and wages went up five percent in five years and even with the layoffs from the juvenile detention center and the and the Runnels hospital but I guess you can chalk that up to contractual increases I don't know if the number of people uh, Actually, were more people were hired, but it sounds like it's more like uh, just escalation costs. Insurance went up $10 million or 14%. Uh, there was a group back five years ago that explained how to save another $7 million in insurance costs, but I assume you didn't even explore how to save that $7 million. Uh, that's only because, uh, from what I see, insurance people donate to your uh, campaigns. Uh, the Division of Strategic Planning was created five years ago for the Sandy Storm, and it's still on the books, being funded three quarters of a million dollars. Uh, one interesting thing, the UCIA is now not being funded, and I find this odd, uh, uh, since you've been giving them $600,000 and it dwindled down to zero. So, I mean, that's okay, but they have a, a $1.5 million annual bill due uh, every uh, you know, twice, two times a year, $1.5 million uh, due to their failed uh, solar program. So, but I don't know where they're getting the money from, and I'm sure you're not concerned with it either. It's their problem. Um, but let's, let's talk about the graph, and hopefully you have it in, in your uh, possession to be looking at it. Yes, is that true, Chair Kowalski? Yes, okay. we received the graph. Thank you. Yes, okay. Uh, what you're looking at, 
we're looking at uh, the top line going all the way up. That's, that's your running <coughs> fund balance. That's the money that accrues by the end of the previous year going into this budget. And it's right in your budget sheets. You know, and that right now is about $100 million. It's actually 103. But we're looking at a, a huge running fund balance as, as the years go by, and, and that's the chart going up. Uh, the next line going down is actually your surplus anticipated, and that more or less stays 20 million, 25 million. It's, it's a pretty flat chart, which is strange only because your running fund balance is, is screaming upward. Uh, the next two lines, which is actually in color, and, and this is what I've been talking about the last couple of years. Uh, the orange line, let's just talk about the orange line. That's your tax increase every year. You're, you're hitting the Excuse the, me, Mr. Patterson. We, yes. we can continue to look at this, but your time for commenting is ending. All right. I look at this carefully because the tax in increase really needs to be uh, decreased to zero. That's, that's the possibility. Thank you. Thank you for the, your, uh, your comments. Line, which yep. the Thank you. Any, any, other, <coughs> any other comments? Thank you. Uh, seeing no one else, I will ask uh, County Council Barry to uh, elaborate on a couple of legal just, points. Just with reference to the, the point in terms of the introduction of the budget, we are in full compliance with the notice requirements and publication requirements on the budget. Thank you. You're welcome. And, uh, Finance Director B.B. Taylor, I think you had a couple of comments. A response, response to the comments. Thank you. Did, did you get a copy of the graph that uh, Mr. Patterson was giving out? I did receive okay. a copy of the graph through you, Chairwoman. Um, it's important to note that while, yes, our surplus has increased, and as a result of a lot of the operational efficiencies that the county manager through the Board of Chosen Freeholders policies, we have been saving quite a bit of operating dollars, which goes directly to tying into our surplus on an annual basis. But it's important to note that back in 2011, our taxes were approximately 13.8, and through a dedicated service and direction from this board, our taxes as of today is increasing by $6.3 million which again is well below the 2010 and 1977 cap. This budget has also been reviewed and approved by the state. All of the various line items, debt service schedules were all reviewed to ensure that they comply with the requirements of law. With that, Madam Chair, I have no further comments. Thank you very much, Director. Excuse me, Chair? Yes. Uh, just um, one note regarding uh, the comments that were offered by Mr. Bennett. Um, with the sale of Runnels Hospital, a portion of the proceeds of that sale was used to retire any debt that was attached to that facility. So it wasn't simply that uh, we let that debt stay on the books. Uh, a portion of the sale, the proceeds, was required by, by law to be set aside to retire that debt. And an additional, uh, I've heard this comment before um, regarding the Union County uh, Police Department, an agency, um, by the way, that I'm, I'm very proud of and I think is a very professional agency and a leader in shared services and law enforcement <coughs> in, in this county and the state of New Jersey. But there are at least five other counties that have law enforcement agencies. Camden actually established one in 2012. They established the Metro. And Hudson, Middlesex, Morris, and Monmouth all have a, uh, a county police agency which is responsible um, for a similar mission of shared service law enforcement as well as enforcing uh, law enforcement in their park system, similar to the Union County Police Department. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And we will close the public comment portion of this meeting and I, of this portion of the meeting, and I will ask Vice Chairman Mirabella to move this resolution. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll move to adopt the 2019 uh, budget for Union County. Thank you. Second, please. Second. I'm moved by the Vice Chairman and seconded by Freeholder Hudak. May we have the roll clerk? Freeholder Estrada. Yes. Freeholder Garrison. Yes. Freeholder Granados. Aye. Freeholder Hudak. Aye. Freeholder Palmer Muda. Aye. Freeholder Staten. Yes. Freeholder Williams. Aye. Vice Chairman Mirabella. Aye. And Chair Kowalski. Yes. Chair, you have nine votes in the affirmative. Thank you. So now we move on to the public comment portion for comments on resolutions being offered for adoption only. So if you would like to comment on any resolution on this agenda, 2019-13 uh, to um, 
2019 to 389. Please come forward and state your name and town of residence and adhere to the five minute time limit. Good evening, Chair Kowalski, ladies and gentlemen. The Freeholder Board, Bruce Patterson Garwood. On page uh, four, uh, number 329, um, this has to do with the flags, uh, buying flags for $20,000. And I know uh, um, Freeholder Strato is asked, you know, are they made in America? And, and I'm always happy to hear that they are. Uh, but the, que the question here is, Amy Wagner came up and you commented on a nice pin and she said she'd like, you know, to show it on TV, but the TV was uh, facing the back of her head, so I mean the pin wasn't really shown. So I'm just asking the question, uh, how many flags were, were being bought for this $20,000? So she can come up and you can show the pin on TV. So, uh, number 332, <laughs> yeah, I'm not yelling yet, but anyway, 332. Uh, the Gordon, St Gordon Street Bridge over there between Roselle and Roselle Park. I mean, this thing, I, this thing has been going on at least eight years. Uh, it's strange. I mean, wh why is it here? Possibly uh, Director Graziano could explain. Uh, I thought it was finished five years ago. It seemed like there is more. Um, page 5, uh, 334, Netta Architects for some kind of door replacement, CUNY. 17,000 for a door replacement. That's his design cost. But anyway, but, but this, this, actually I didn't get to say it during the budget. Maybe I'll say it later on or so I'll, I'll say it now, but there really should be a pay to play ordinance in place. Because I mean, Netta Architects, he receives contracts from you all the time. He donated $77,000 to the freeholders and, and their cronies campaigns in four years. Uh, number 338. Yeah, 338, 339, 340, 341. Those, those are Teneglia and Mazer Consulting. Uh, they're all engineering firms. There's, there's no costs for any shovel in the ground. It's all just engineering and, and construction administration and inspection. Uh, one is for 148,000. One is for 189,000. One is for 137,000. Uh, oh, 341 is, yeah, and one is for uh, 89,000. These, these are like, you know, what does that add up? About three quarters of a million dollars for engineering costs, no shovel in the ground. And Neglia gave $20,000 to the freeholders in the cronies campaigns in four years. Uh, Mazer gave $18,000 to the freeholders and cro cronies in four years. I mean, pay to play, it's just, it's just rampant here. Uh, Page eight, uh, another one, 356, Kologi and Simmets. Uh, Leal Law Firm, they gave $18,000 to the freeholders and their, and their uh, cronies in, in four years. I, you know, I know elections are coming up. I guess you guys need money and I, you start seeing contracts going out to the same people that donate to you. Uh, 359, Wiener Law Firm, that's Senator Lesniak's old firm. He's, they, they're getting a total of $115,000. Uh, Wiener actually hasn't donated uh, directly. Oh, yeah. Hey, here's um, uh, Dakota Fitzpatrick. That's 361. They donated $125,000 to the freeholders and their cronies in four years. I, it's just amazing. Just amazing. Just the money that, that flows to the political donors. Um, yeah, three, 388. Uh, better hearing and speech month. Uh, you know, I'm trying to curb my speech be better. It's tough. Uh, 389, this is interesting. So there's a resolution graduating uh, Union County Freeholder Mirabella upon his induction to the New Jersey Association of Counties Hall of Fame, 20 years of service. I will grant him that he's given 20 years of service just as a freeholder. He also served as a councilman, but I'll tell you, for what he's done in the 20 years, nothing good for the taxpayers. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just note that uh, we observe the letter of the law as to awarding contracts and uh, County Council, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, well, we have uh, made this statement on a number of occasions and the county is in full compliance with any requirements relative to pay to play and uh, implement a process of uh, 
requests for quotations, requests for uh, proposals when appropriate, and bids at other times when necessary. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, do you want to respond, Vice no, Chairman? No, yeah. I just want to uh, thank Mr. Patterson for his kind words. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other public comments? On resolutions. Okay, may I will close the public <coughs> comment portion and ask for a motion to adopt resolutions 2019 315 through 2019 389. So moved. So moved by Freeholder <coughs> Granado, seconded by Freeholder Staten. Uh, Clerk of the Board, please call the roll. My apologies. Who seconded the uh, motion? Uh, Freeholder State. Thank you very much. Freeholder Estrada? Yes. Freeholder Garrison? Yes. Freeholder Granados? Aye. Freeholder Hudak? Aye. Freeholder Palmieri Mudek? Aye. Freeholder Staten? Yes. Freeholder Williams? Aye. Vice Chairman Mirabella? Aye. Chair Kowalski? Yes. Chair, you have nine votes in the affirmative. Thank you. And now I'll open to the meeting to the public for the purpose of commenting on any governmental issue that a member of the public feels may be of concern to the residents of Union County. So if you have a comment, please state your name and town of residence and observe the five-minute time limit. So anyone have a comment on a matter of general interest? <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Ray Licata. I'm from Cranford. I was here in January, January 24th. Um, I spoke about um, I spoke about um, the, the, the need the lack of a need for a cell tower and I tried to describe what a DAS is and that a DAS is all that's needed for internal coverage at the college which is the only problem that they had um, a few freeholders made comments and I thank you for those and I just came to kind of recap things and to address those comments sorry it took so long <laughs> um, again the DAS uh, you know, if I use this podium as an example, this is a building at Un Union County uh, College in Cranford. And this room is the campus. You can walk all around the campus and you will get three bars on your Verizon, at least three or four, everywhere on campus, including where the deer hang out behind the tennis courts and where the, 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 the geese are on the pond. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. Um, there's no issue outside. It's, there is no cell coverage issue whatsoever. So when people say the campus, that's a way to intentionally deceive you and say that the, you know, the, the building is on the campus. So technically the campus has a problem, but nowhere outdoor does the campus have a problem, okay? So again, this is the building right here. The podium is, is a building and there's seven buildings. And the way, and they do have a problem inside. Their cell assessment for 2012 said that the coverage inside is marginal to poor. It also said back then that the cell coverage outside is, is good to fair and it's only gotten better since then. Um, again, there's no coverage issues. So if this is the building, then the way you get cell coverage inside a building is to use the DAS. Stadiums have them, airports have them, malls have them. It's the standard, it's the in industry standard. There's just a bunch of little antennas that they put on every floor wherever they need to. On top of the building, they put a couple of uh, small antennas. There would be about this high in a building this size. And that gives all the reception. It helps take the load off the nearby towers, and it provides great reception. Now, there's, you know, and Union County College is going to get a DAS. It's going to fix all their cell coverage issues. And there is no public safety issue. And speaking of the public safety issue, so on January 24th, one freeholder mentioned that, um, that uh, to jump around, that this contract is not with the Union County Board of Freeholders. However, you know that it's with the college, and and, uh, and not with not with this board. But the board does give, you know, has allocated 15.5, 15.4 million dollars to the UCC for this year. Um, the, you know, this is a financial issue, by the way. Uh, the UCC will benefit from this. That's what. That's why they're doing it. Um, the UCC will make 34,500 a year plus other fees from carriers for, the, for up to 25 years. Um, Verizon benefits because they can save money by putting more towers around. So if there's a cell tower 
200 feet that way and 200 feet that way. Then you put another cell tower here, they can lower the power in all three. They can operate at a cheaper cost by having lower power. So this is completely a financial issue. I mean, again, that's from my own research because there's really no other uh, re reason other than financial here. Um, so back to some of the comments. And one freeholder mentioned that they would get upset if they were, were tried to pick up their phone and, and they wouldn't be able to talk. You can talk across the whole campus and even Nomahegan Park. Everywhere has cell coverage. Um, someone else mentioned that uh, they've personally been inside parts of the campus and there's no reception. I'd like to know, was that inside the building or is that outside? Because I can guarantee you outside has coverage. I, by the way, I live two blocks away. I've been there two and a half years. I've never had a cell coverage problem. I have Verizon and AT&T phones. I've walked through the park over 100 times with my dogs and my kids. I've taken long walks with being on conference calls for work. The phone has never dropped. I've never not been able to send a call or receive a call or send a text or receive. I, I, I've never had a problem. I've never heard of a problem. That yellow light must yeah. be very quick. Coming to the cl close. <laughs> Got a few so, more seconds. So, you know, so there is something that I think the, 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 ca the Board of Freeholders could do. They could help us out. We're saddled with a problem where we're trying to fight the eight biggest company in the, in the country, Verizon. The, the, the UCC got into this without asking anybody. And, you know, you are representing us. You know, it, it can't just be pushed to local and the state. You know, the UCC isn't going to them. Uh, you know, we need your help. You know, so, I, you know, anything you can do uh, to stop this and ask for an independent and comprehensive cell assessment study, we would appreciate it. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, yeah, uh, John Berry of uh, Kenilworth, and uh, just two uh, housekeeping items, I guess. Uh, as far as Mr. Patterson, you know, mentioning the pay-to-play here, and, that, and you're saying, well, it's within the rules. Um, what's important to note that these are the rules of New Jersey. I, even Steve Sweeney admits that you know the problem here is governance. I mean, he's trying to get pension reform, and it's not working, and he's just really failing miserably. But it, it is New Jersey, where at a, one point, Dakotas had their lawyers cut checks to the Uni County Democratic Committee. It was like 25, 30,000. Then they got the UCIA appointment. It's, it, there aren't really rules in New Jersey. It's, it's like a roadmap to acceptable bribes, I mean, which is what these actually are. I, I mean, it's pretty blatant. It was kind of like the first thing I noticed when I started looking at this stuff. And the second part is the Open Space Trust Fund. And I saw the number here in the, uh, in the budget. Debt service open space, 5,541,000. Now the open space brings in like 10 million, 11 million. That's more than half of it. And that's a number I can't figure out. If there's, the, these, the, there's been nothing bought for years. And what's been bought, has, there's been sufficient amounts. And I can't find any backup for this number anywhere. And then on the next page, there's this open space park maintenance, 2.25 million. And it's been 2.25 million for a while. It's a nice round number, and it's just a random number that's being taken. I mean, people of Uni County pay 1.5 percent on top of the regular, and it's basically going to the Uni County budget. And it could very well be going to their own, if they wanted to pay those taxes, to their own budget to do things like maybe buy open space but it's being rated, and I can't, uh, it seems pretty obvious. And again, we get back to New Jersey. This is New Jersey, which uh, the Division of Government Services has to look over hundreds of budgets, and these things are pretty weighty. So th this kind of stuff can easily be missed or not reviewed or maybe not worth the trouble. But it's pretty blatant theft from, uh, from a trust fund. Um, yep, those are my points, thanks. Any other comments? Mike Norman Cranford. Uh, we wanted to, to stop by and say thank you, BJ, for your support and comments about the tower. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we know that Verizon is applying to the Cranford Zoning Board. 
uh, but strongly believe that an independent study should be done for the cell coverage needed by the college before a major disruption is done to the neighborhood and in, in our community. Uh, since their own study indicated that they needed what all, all they needed was a DAS system, and that will solve all their problems. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? How are you doing, uh, Ray Gargiulo, Westfield? Um, I just want to second what they said about the cell tower. I'm not really so, uh, what's the word, uh, informed on the situation, uh, specifics about things I've read in the last couple of days. But, um, you know, one thing that I, I live, the cell tower is not going to, uh, as far as my house, it's probably not going to be seen. So it's not like it's, a, it's a, in my backyard that I, that's the reason why I'm here. But uh, certainly driving through, it's certainly going to be this, you know, gigantic thing in the middle that there's nothing blocking it. Um, and you know, my living in Westfield and somewhere close to U, uh, Union County College, this is now the second time in six years that they've done something without really help, really looking into the neighborhood first. And somebody's got to get them under control. I mean, UCC is part of Union County. They're part of our community. We're part of their community. And for them to act twice in six years against the community and for $30,000 a year, I mean, I would think if, if taxes go down one, if uh, values of the house go down 1% because of this cell tower, that's going to, or 2%, whatever the number is, that's going to be more set off by the taxes that, uh, the drop in revenue from tax to the county than they're actually going to be earning a year. Um, somebody really needs to tell, talk to Union County College and say, remember, you're part of this community. You're not uh, this, this independent operation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me just note in response to what you said, the college, uh, you can have a seat, thanks. Um, the college does um, consult with Cranford on some issues and in fact it, I th it may be that they will have the, that Verizon will have to take the cell tower application to the zoning board. Um, but there have been occasions where the college has uh, answered concerns and for instance moved the um, the HVAC unit from where it was originally proposed. So there is there is some some give and take. Uh, sorry, you're, you're, you've, you've had your, your time, but I can talk to you more about it later if, if, if you'd like to. Is there anybody else with comment? Yes. My name is John Mulholland. I'm from Westfield also. Um, I wish I was a little more prepared for this. I basically heard a little bit about, uh, about the 130-foot cell tower, and I have to say is on the way over here from Westfield, I was trying to identify one that might be the same height as that, and I couldn't find one. Um, where I live, and I wish I had a big map to show you, uh, I live where the man back there said where the deer play. I am, if you could see, which I don't think you can, there's but two just dots. Why don't you just describe where, where, where do you live in? Yards yeah. away yeah. From the tower. Okay. So if you basically pulled out from where the tower is going, made a right, drove through the house that gets you into Westfield, I, 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 I live right there. And my only concern is that I'm not sure what a 130-foot tower would look like. I don't know if you need any infrastructure or a generator at the bottom. I'm pretty sure that if my neighbor was going to build a swimming pool or a garage or an extension on their house, that I would have been notified. And that's <coughs> a little concerning to me. And yes, four, four or five years ago, they were thinking of putting a field um, right near the tennis courts, again, right near where the deer play. And I wasn't notified there either. And where I drive down my house, my uh, street, to go down there, my street, which is Harding, and you guys were all invited to, co to come over for coffee if you like to see this, because I don't have pictures. But just, you drive down the street, and the first thing that I'm going to see, most of the homes are 25 feet, 30 feet, and 100 yards or so beyond that is going to be a 130-foot structure that no one's ever even sent me a letter saying, you know, that, that they're thinking of building this, or here's the plan. And I just, you know, like just something I'm just looking for, some help or some guidance, because I really don't even know what this is about, but they have excavated the woods. They're planning on it, not one letter in the world, and just looking for some help. Okay, okay thank you. Megan Leary, Westfield. I just wanted to second what everybody's saying about the cell tower. 
Um, I'm not an expert on government. I'm not an expert on cell towers. But from everything I understand, there's other options besides this really huge cell tower, which will probably be seen by my street. But I would be against it no matter where it is. I think it's just horrible for an entire area to, to see this cell tower when, from everything I hear, there's other options. So I'm just asking for your assistance in getting more information on this and helping Union County to be a good neighbor to Westfield and Cranford. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, Chair Kowalski, ladies and gentlemen, the freeholder board, uh, Bruce Patterson Garwood. Uh, just, just a comment on the cell tower. You know, I would assume Verizon is actually just using Union County College as an excuse so they could put up this large cell tower because it sounds like they may need it to lower power levels. I guess that's what it sounds like. So, I mean, there's a little subterfuge here. It's not all about Union County College. It's about Verizon wanting to put up a big tower. That's what it's about. But, but the suggestion probably to make this whole issue go away is No Mohegan Park is there. Just place it somewhere inside No Mohegan Park, uh, you know, towards the boulevard possibly. I mean, there's, there's no homes close by. It's a large park and it actually spreads over the boulevard into uh, where the shooting range was. So, I mean, you, you do have a lot of green space to situate this tower a lot better than putting it close to the houses of Westfield and Cranford, causing some great concern to the residents. Just uh, in, the, in the future possibly, I, I'm just gonna ask, I mean, I, not many people stand up and talk about the budget. It's a half a billion dollar budget, and uh, I, I go through it, and, and you know I have comments and such, and yet you only hold me to five minutes, like everybody else, of course. But I, I think really you should increase it to maybe seven minutes so I can get some additional information out before you vote. Not that anything I'm pointing out, it seems you guys are just in lockstep and you just vote, but hopefully you're listening and maybe pick up a few pointers of what I'm trying to say. So the Open Space Trust Fund, as, as Mr. Burry and, and another gentleman said, I mean, the Open Space Trust Fund, it, it comes down to maybe out of $10 million they collect, it goes to all sorts of rental and debt and, and employment services. And what's left is about $1.5 million out of that $10 million. So, and that's grants, uh, whatever the grant is that comes out of that Open Space Trust Fund. So, I mean, Mr. Fairholder Granatus is right. It serves all the towns, but it doesn't, it collects a lot of money, and then it gives back minimal. So, I don't know, whatever you want to do with that. Uh, pay to play. You know, and I've talked about it before, and, and somebody else has mentioned it too, but, but you abide by the state laws. Great, wonderful. And yet, you know, we're looking at this, and I'm talking about tens and tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars campaign uh, financing, you know, political donors. It was really rampant 10 years ago. It was actually worse, I think. But anyway, uh, West, uh, Plainfield, from what I understand, Plainfield has a, a very stringent pay to play in there. And, and there, were two, uh, there were two council people, I think they tried to uh, abolish the ordinance. The two council people actually stood up and spoke, and uh, one, is, one was saying the estimated the pay to play adds 15 to 20 percent to the cost of affected contracts. And, and I, I'm not going to deny that. I mean, where else do they get the money to give to the campaigns when you give them contracts? Uh, another councilman actually said uh, it creates a lack of confidence among the voters, and it's an invisible tax on Plainfield residents. So let's address this pay to play finally. Let's go to Plainfield to find out what kind of stringent ordinance they have and bring that forth. It'd be a great shared service on the ordinance. So, I mean, you know, reach out to Plainfield. Adrian Mapp, nice guy as the mayor. I mean, and just let me uh, say, yeah, we're talking about pay to play, these matching grants, and I've said this before, you know, you don't need to have the term matching with the grants. You give it to them. One freeholder the last time I talked about it said that, uh, oh, well, towns get other grants and they get other appropriations to do whatever the infrastructure work is, and so we should have a matching grant. Well, if they're getting other grants and other infrastructure costs, you don't need to match it. All you have to do is just give them the additional money. Matching, all that does is increase taxes all around to all the towns. Somehow you just don't comprehend that, you know, you just have to keep increasing taxes, keep increasing taxes. doesn't make any sense. And that's where my graph came in, and I, I guess just the yellow light 
those last two items, I mean, it looks like from 2016, your surplus, you could have easily decreased the taxes to zero in one, two, three, four years. Four years it is. But I don't know. You know, maybe people don't understand surplus. Uh, if anybody really wants to talk to me about all this stuff, you know, because I've been studying these uh, budgets, I mean, you know, reach out to me. I'll sit down with you. I'll explain it. I'll enlighten you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Uh, I will simply note that Moody's continues to give Union County <coughs> the highest bond rating, and it, ma it cites our management of, of our debt, in particular net debt expressed as percentage of the equalized valuation basis. So um, Moody's has been around for quite a long time and uh, doesn't hand out ratings lightly, but we have consistently uh, done very well in, in their evaluations. So um, I think I'll just check and see if there's, there's no further comment. I will bring this portion of the meeting to a close and ask for freeholder reports. So uh, Freeholder Granados, <coughs> if you'd like to yeah. comment. Thank you, Chair. Just um, want to be brief in making one statement and when it comes to combining our county police and our county sheriff's department. I want to echo the words of Freeholder Hudak also in saying that I believe our sheriff's department with our county police provide two different essential services to our residents and that's something I am not in support of and will not be in support of because as we see that they continue to expand their county police due to the amount of different services they're providing for our residents and I continue to stand alongside them with that. That's it, Chair. Thank you. Freeholder Williams? Um, <clears throat> Yeah, just uh, one thing. Um, last week, uh, I joined Chair Kowalski and Freeholder Granados uh, up at the Maskers Barn um, in the deserted village for the Adopt a Park and Trail Steward uh, recognition dinner. And it was really great meeting some of the, the volunteers who dedicate hundreds of hours uh, of, from their personal time to help preserve and protect our natural resources. Um, I'd also like to remind seniors uh, and their caregivers that ASK, which is our, uh, an acronym for the Aging Services Kiosk Program, will visit seven libraries in one of the senior centers in May to give additional uh, information on resources for our older active adults. And um, also, I'm happy to report that our new mobile office for We Are One New Jersey opened this morning and within 30 minutes, they had their first application for citizenship. We talked about this at a prior meeting. Um, also, as some of you may know, I think we also uh, mentioned this at a prior meeting, the new mobile office is located in uh, Assemblywoman Linda Carter's Plainfield uh, Legislative Office at 200 West 2nd Street, which is a Park Madison building, and they will be providing guidance to any Union County resident uh, who is seeking assistance with uh, immigration issues or concerns. Uh, we'd like to thank Assemblywoman Ca Carter and all of our colleagues here uh, for bringing this to my city of Plainfield. If you have um, questions or want more details about these programs, ask Adopt the Park and We Are One New Jersey. Visit our county website, ucnj.org, um, or call our public information line, 877 Four two four one two three four. That's eight seven seven four two four one two three four. Uh, Chair, that concludes my remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Fielder Hudak. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a couple of announcements. Um, the need for a warm, loving home um, is especially urgent for LGBTQ youth uh, who face an additional level, layer of trauma. And if you believe that you can offer a safe, secure, and affirming home. Uh, I encourage you to join us this Thursday, April 27th, for a special information session on fostering LGBTQ youth in our community. Uh, the event will take place between 5 and 7 p.m. at the Warnaco Sports Center um, in Warnaco Park at One Park Drive in Roselle. And for more details, you can visit uh, the county website or contact Danny Newberry at our Office of LGBTQ Affairs at 908-527-4742. Um, Want to make an announcement regarding the outdoor
concert series in our parks this summer. Uh, please circle your calendars. Saturday, June 1, uh, will be the annual Rhythm and Blues by the Brook Festival at Cedar Brook Park in Plainfield from noon to 6 p.m. Um, we are honored to once again have the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra mark the beginning of our Summer Arts Festival with a special performance on Friday, June 21st at 7.30 p.m. at Echo Lake Park in Mountainside. And uh, expect an announcement shortly for our Summer Arts Concerts and Family Films Festival on the county website in, in the next few weeks. So please stay tuned for that. Um, we also want to remind families um, who have the need, uh, who have young children who are required to be in safety, safety uh, child seats. Um, they are very complicated, I know firsthand, and sometimes difficult to install. And that's okay because one of the shared services and community services provided by our Union County Police Department is a free safety seat inspection. Um, these inspections take place each Wednesday and Thursday at 7.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the Garwood First Aid Squad at 401 Second Avenue in Garwood. Um, and it's a drop-in service, so if you've just gotten that new seat and you want to make sure you've properly secured it, and sometimes they can be um, complex, and even if you've been doing it for a while, I've, I always found it was good to have someone check the work because maybe I wasn't um, putting the shoulder straps on correctly or I was um, you know, attaching the lower part to the seat and I shouldn't be because the seat belt should be doing it. The seats are all very nuanced and the technicians are all very professional, very knowledgeable of the different <laughs> brands and also of recalls. Um, if your seat happens to be on a recall list, which they often are uh, because someone has an issue and, and the company is not always the best about notifying the previous owners or you never registered the seat, they can let you know. So that's also a, a valuable service. I, I just want to make one final comment regarding the budget. Um, Mr. Patterson uh, made a, a comment again about matching grants, and Mr. Patterson, we are just going to ag agree to disagree on this point, uh, but I think personally, my experience, the matching grant is a good idea. We've seen with the Open Space Trust Fund, um, the projects that we see are good, they're vetted. But it's also helpful to see the municipality put skin into the game to make sure it gets done because we had many grants that for a long time there were unrealized projects because we didn't require the town to have that match. And many times the communities will work with, say, a corporate partner to get additional funding. And, and it does expand the ability of the dollar to go farther, but it also does create urgency to make the project happen. In the specific case of the infrastructure grants, um, it is a grant that is offered in the confine of the fiscal year, which means um, if these projects aren't in the municipal budget on January 1, they're not going to happen and these funds need to be spent. The, the grant is designed for shovel-ready projects that we will see completed in this calendar year, and it does provide opportunities for the municipalities to expand those dollars and do more work with them, um, whether it be in this year or turning that money into, dare I say, uh, the dreaded word I heard tonight, surplus, um, for projects in future years. So um, it's a good thing, and I guess, again, we will agree to disagree. And, and lastly, um, I had uh, the pleasure, I had a, a co-pilot here for a little while this evening, and I think she's somewhere around um, the freeholder office right now, but my daughter, uh, Katie, joined me for the uh, Take Your Child to Work Day festivities in the county that were held in multiple departments. Uh, this this uh, this Thursday and um, I want to express my appreciation we attended the um, um, the program at the Public Safety Building the Union County Police um, was there as well as um, hazmat and our um, our rescue squad and they they put on a great presentation for the young people but there was also programs at various offices throughout the county and um, I'm sure a lot of parents enjoyed bringing their children to work today and I know a lot of the county employees uh, enjoyed the opportunity to meet with uh, the young children and, and teach them about the mission, uh, the various missions they have to service our Union County residents. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Freeholder. Freeholder Staten. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming out. Uh, with all the cold weather and rain, I'm sure we are all ready for summer, and now is the time to plan for the growing season. 
I like to everyone to mark your calendar and save the date for the Spring Garden Fair, which takes place this year on Sunday, May 19th, from 12 noon to 4 p.m. on the grounds of Union County Demonstration Garden, located by the Trailside Nature and Science Center in the Wachon Reservation in Mountainside. The Spring Garden Fair is a fun, it's inspiring, and educational way to stock up on plants and other supplies for healthy, beautiful yard or garden and get expert guidance from the master gardeners of Union County. As always, admission and parking to the Garden Fair is free. And we will uh, give you another reminder as it gets closer to the date. Uh, I'd like to wish my council uh, colleague, Kim, a happy birthday. She celebrated her birthday this year, so happy birthday, Kim. And that's it for this evening. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, happy birthday, Kim. Um, <laughs> I just had the opportunity this this, uh, this afternoon to go to the YWCA of Union County annual meeting and partner recognition, which this year they are recognizing uh, uh, some honorees, uh, Teresa Cosmas, Sergeant uh, uh, Mahassan El Amin, Ryan and Dana Felmet, First Presbyterian uh, Church of Cranford, uh, the Garden State Bank, the Bishop of New York Community Bank, Kids for Kids, in mindfulness uh, movement, uh, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, and uh, Lauren Thorne. And in this yearly, uh, this year's uh, meeting, it, they review all the things that they have done, and they, this is being done at the Clark Public Library. And you know, the Clark Public Library is one of those community libraries that are always open. They have an Ayers room uh, downstairs that it's amazing, and uh, I know they always are ready to help the community. So, my thanks to the Clark Library. Also, uh, today being children's uh, day to come to work with their parents, uh, I tell you, from what I gather, what I hear, everybody had a great, great time all across the county, and that's something that is extremely important for our children to get to a feel of what their parents do when they come to work every day. And that's something that uh, is a tradition that we have had along here. Even Ed's breakfast this morning, I heard he was flopping eggs and everything else. Very healthy <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> Uh, and at the same time, for those individuals who suffer from allergies, my condolences. I think we've had one of the worst years when it comes to uh, pollen out there. And uh, I'm sorry to say that it's going to last for a little while longer. So hang on, get your allergy medication, and hopefully you'll, you'll feel better. And uh, on the budget, I wouldn't leave without the budget. Uh, there is no doubt that every year or every time their budget comes out, there are always going to be positions that people take or see in terms of how the budget is or has been. I truly say, and I'm going to use uh, this particular uh, uh, here, this, it tells you very easily how much how hard the county people in finance are working to make sure that we keep the commitment to this level, and that's something very important. It, uh, no matter what anybody says about the reserves, it's the reality is if we did not have that money available every year, we would have to actually go out for loans just to pay our, our bills. Because unfortunately, the money does not flow in the same fashion that the drawing does. But in the same token, could there be any, any different changes in terms of the budget? Well, you have seen a big change this year and last year, so I commend uh, Freeholder uh, Granados last year for taking a major step, and Freeholder uh, Kowalski this year. And it really means a great commitment of bringing about an, a change in our structure, our financial structure, in a tough, in a very positive light, and also understanding that any major adjustments such as this do have a, a major uh, impact in terms of the overall operations. And, and my, I commend them all for, for that, and uh, listen, we still, is there room? Of course, there's always gonna be room, but we just need to work on it to get it there at the right time. So, everybody saw the, the, saw the sign, the, the, uh, the draft, right? Oh, good, thank you. Thank you, Freeholder. Freeholder Palmieri Modin. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, <clears throat> I'd like to echo uh, Freeholder Hudak and Freeholder Estrada's comments about Take Your Children to Work Day. Uh, my four boys uh, had the privilege of participating at the program um, at the public safety office this morning and then they came for the earlier afternoon, uh, late afternoon, early evening here today um, because uh, it made me very proud being a stay-at-home mom uh, for the past six years um, and taking my children to other places um, where either their father or grandparents, aunts, uncles work um, each year. It was very exciting for me to be able to take my children to um, my own place. So I thank you for, for putting that together. Um, <clears throat> I want to remind everyone that this weekend, uh, two of our most popular events will be taking place on Sunday, um, April 28th at the Watchung Reservation from 11 to 5 p.m. We'll be holding our Wild Earth Fest, uh, which takes place at the Trailside um, Nature and Science Center. It's a great way to help youngsters and your family learn about the importance of conservation and environmental stewardship here in Union County. Uh, and taking place at the same time at the Loop Playground is the Touch a Truck event. I know lots of children love that. You get to climb on all of the trucks and beep the horns. Um, there will be a sensory uh, friendly quiet hour between 11 and 12 p.m. So we want to remind families of that. Admission is $5 and it covers both events. Um, children under six are free. Uh, you can find out more information on the county website. We hope to see you there. It's a great event. I know my children look forward to it every year. Uh, and the Westfield residents that were in attendance today to talk about the cell tower, I, I believe they all left, but I'm happy to speak to any of them um, at any point. So thank you. That's all. Thank you. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. And thank you for the birthday wishes. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Bill DeCarrotson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I better follow suit. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, I have a couple of things I'd like to share, specifically coming out of the um, New Jersey Association of Counties. Um, the most recent meeting, there were a couple of legislative updates that I just wanted to share. I did have an opportunity to share them with our county manager, but thought it would be great to also share as we move towards the conference coming up. One of them being the state legislature is looking to change the name of our county correctional officers. Um, to county corrections police officers. There will be no change or effect in their benefits, but that's something that they're working towards. So I just wanted to share that. And I don't know if we have any updates or our position. The second would be the appropriations amendment to the assembly that will allow freeholders to appoint members to the Board of Elections directly. So that's something else that is being explored. Um, the next one is in the 2020 budget. The state is not appropriating any revenue to county and municipal 911 call centers. We know how valid and relevant our call center is, so that's just something that we need to watch. And finally, um, there's a discussion of the possibility of extending the statute of limitations for victims of sexual misconduct from two years to four years. So I thought all those were four really interesting issues, so we will continue to be um, updated and abreasted on those particular topics. I also wanted to share um, the April newsletter edition from NJAC was, um, asked me to put a spotlight so if you didn't know why I love Union County so much there was a little shout out to our county so hopefully everyone had a chance to see that but um, the most important or interesting highlight I'd like to share and he's not here for our county um, conference which is going to happen in May starting May 8th through the 10th our none other than our vice chair will be recognized for 20 years of service so I'm really excited about that we tried to really think about how to engage all the freeholders around the state and we thought it would be wonderful to be able to recognize those who've served a lot longer than all of us so I just thought that was really cool that was something that was able to be incorporated into the conference this year and again none other than our own freeholder vice chair Mirabella will be recognized I also wanted to um, say to Mr. Bergen we don't vote lock and step what we do is before we get here we have a number of committee meetings many 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 committee meetings so there's so much involvement um, throughout the months throughout the weeks that there's a lot of discussion conversations um, debates to really go over some of the issues but again your detail and your interest in looking at a lot of the um, interworkings of what we do it is appreciated but we don't just vote lock and set when we get here we actually do discuss it before um, we are here so that we can again be able to have our positions 
And finally this evening, I just wanted to share something very briefly from the, the county side, our Recycle Coach mobile app. It's a very, very dynamic um, app. It's exciting. It's something that all 21 municipalities can benefit from. We also offer online recycling, markets directory, and so much more. Um, but you can find all that great information on the county website. And even though the Earth Day has come and gone, everyone in Union County can pitch in every day of the year by recycling and conserving resources and safely disposing of hazardous waste. Think about that. <laughs> Thank you very much and have a wonderful um, evening and look forward to seeing everyone next time. Thank you, Freeholder. Uh, County Council? No comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. County Manager? No comments. Okay. Well, I've we time. have Thank spoken a, a bit about Freeholder Vice Chairman Mirabella, but I would, would like to add that um, in his 20 years, um, he has worked to worked with he's chaired the open space trust fund he's chaired the finance committee he's worked on education he's promoted uh, the expansion of our vocational technical uh, schools he has uh, helped to create the first office on LGBTQ affairs in New Jersey along with uh, freeholder Granados uh, who served as chair last year um, I personally have worked with him in my 14 years here on, on many issues, uh, a, a strong advocate of our parks, of, of, uh, of making life better for, for people here in Union County. So uh, I, I uh, applaud and Jack for uh, uh, recognizing him um, and uh, wish him congratulations. On another note, um, we have, uh, well, we have uh, a day for seniors coming up, or at least a morning, um, and that's staying in New Jersey, how to make your money last. And that's going to be held on next Tuesday, April 30th, at the Westwood in Garwood from 9 in the morning to 11.45, and we'll be co-sponsoring with the Senior Citizens Council of Union County. Uh, it's a free event. It'll provide important financial guidance, as well as health care resources for older adults and their caregivers. Um, Earth Day has officially passed, but there are uh, the cleanups going on this weekend uh, all around the county. Uh, I'll be going to the one at uh, Winfield Park at Bloodgood Dam at 8.45 in the morning, along with uh, Boy Scout troops and the Rollway River Watershed Association. Um, that is typically a a very large and uh, enthusiastic group. But there are cleanups going on in Cranford, Roselle, Summit Union, and quite a few other cities and towns. So please uh, check your local press for the one that's closest to you. Um, I don't know if anybody mentioned that Ashbrook Golf Course is now open. Uh, so uh, for golfers, uh, I encourage you to uh, have a have a look at Ashbrook. The, the new telephone number is 908-490-8620. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank County Manager Oatman, Deputy County Manager Wagner, Director Taylor, and all of our department heads and, and my colleagues for bringing in a budget under the 2% cap. I know it was a lot of work to protect this, our services and yet keep the numbers down. And I, I, I appreciate it and I think all of our residents appreciate it so and it's been expressed tonight so we'll keep up the good work and uh, uh, former freeholder chair Granados uh, got us on the right track last year with it so we'll, we'll continue with that and I think that I will now call for a motion to adjourn Second. And seconded, moved by Freeholder Williams, seconded by Freeholder Hudak. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Thank you. We're adjourned. Okay. I want to